give everyone a couple minutes to log in. started right about one o'clock so everyone can come in. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar discussing the wonderful nonprofit organization Triage Cancer. I will be your host. My name is Lindsay Nyenbrink, an oncology social worker and a care coach here at Jasper. We are very excited that you are here to join us. Before we get started, I would like to take a moment to point out that you may notice that your mics are muted and your cameras are turned off. This is intentional to keep the focus on our speaker today. Please reach out to support at hellojasper.com or write in the Q&A section tab if you are experiencing any technical issues. But please note our limited capacity to discuss these issues while the webinar is running. Also, I want to inform you that we are recording the webinar and then we will upload it to our website for your future reference. Please make sure to include any questions that you have in our Q&A tab and we will answer all these questions at the end of the presentation. So now let's get started and take a look at our agenda for today's presentation. Today's session will focus on a few key areas. First, I will share a little bit about Jasper Health, our origin, our purpose, and the partnerships that we have with over 40 nonprofit organizations. Then our speaker, Joanna Morales, CEO, will explain what services are available through triage cancer. Both myself and Joanna will discuss the meanings and effects of financial toxicity. Lastly, we will end the webinar with some questions from you. Many may be thinking, Jasper, what does that mean? Why do they call themselves Jasper? Well, a fun and interesting fact is that Jasper is named after the Jasper crystal, which you see on the screen. It is known as a supreme nurturer. It is said to empower the spirit, and support people through times of stress by preparing them to fully show up. It is claimed to protect you from and absorb negative vibes while promoting courage, quick thinking, and confidence. And that is what we do here at Jasper. We support and empower you. We strive to help you during your journey, removing as much negative energy as possible. Now that you know why we're called Jasper, I want to briefly explain a little more about Jasper Health and what we do. Jasper Health is a free digital oncology platform for anyone touched by cancer, whether you are diagnosed with cancer or are a caregiver. Jasper Health strives to support the person as a whole and to meet each individual where they are at along their journey. The Jasper app acts as a smart planner, a tracking tool, and a resource hub all in one and our Jasper care coaches act as an extension of traditional care. Our care coaches are available 24 seven to address aspects of the whole person. Our members receive custom recommendations. They're able to track their moods and symptoms and have access to educational articles based on their interests and side effects that they indicate. Jasper can also help with appointments, providing financial guidance, mental health support, nutrition and meal planning, remission and survivorship, support, and much more. Our members experience one-on-one -on -one support and guidance based on their specific needs. Jasper's health goal is to improve the lives of all people living with and affected by cancer by providing purposeful individualized support. It is important for Jasper to have partnerships with other organizations with this same mission. That is why to date, Jasper has over 40 nonprofit profit partners nationwide we have linked arms with to become successful in providing the most meaningful support for our members. 
And as you can see on the screen, Triage Cancer is one of these wonderful organizations. Today, I am delighted to have the opportunity to make you more aware of the wonderful services and resources that Triage Cancer offers. Now, before I introduce today's speaker, the CEO of Triage Cancer, I would like to do a quick poll. If everybody could please take a moment to participate in the poll that you're gonna see on your screen. We'll give you about 30 seconds to answer it. Just give you some time. Couple more seconds. Okay, so while some of you are aware, um, I think it's very important to go into more detail about triage cancer because there's so much that they do help with. So now I would like you all to meet our speaker from triage cancer, Joanna Morales. Hi, Joanna. Thank you so much for being here with us today to discuss triage cancer and the wonderful support you provide. Um, can you brief... Can you see again? Can you briefly tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, first, I'm going to say thank you for uh, inviting us to participate today. And uh, I am actually a cancer rights attorney by training, where I've spent the better part of the last two decades as a lawyer helping people navigate the systems that come up as a result of a cancer diagnosis. And so uh, I have focused on providing education about those systems because we think it's the best way to help people actually get through them, um, because most of those issues aren't um, easily solved through litigation, which is what most people think of when they think of a lawyer. They think of a courtroom and suing someone. Uh, but education about the laws and how they might be able to help you can be very useful. And so that's what we have focused on at Triage Cancer. Well, thank you so much. And we're happy to have you here today. Now, for those that aren't completely familiar with Triage Cancer, can you go into a little bit more detail about your organization and the different services that you can provide on a wider scope? Sure. So Triage Cancer is a national nonprofit organization. So we help people in every state, D.C., uh, Guam, and the other territories. Uh, we provide free education on the legal and practical issues that come up after a cancer diagnosis. And uh, those legal and practical issues really run the gamut. Uh, and most of the time, those legal issues also have a financial impact. Uh, on someone's situation after they've been diagnosed and not just for the individual who's been diagnosed, but also for the whole family, caregivers included. And so we provide that free education to help people better understand the laws that apply and the programs they have access to. And we do that through providing free educational events, uh, we have educational materials and resources, and we also offer a legal and financial navigation program. That, that's all wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. And I know, you know, everybody's diagnosis and journey is very specific, but so many different areas can come up and um, you guys cover an array of different topics. Can you discuss some of the more common legal issues related to cancer that you guys um, have come across and, and can really help navigate with the patients and their family who help take over for the patient who's unable to? Absolutely. When I tell people that I'm a cancer rights attorney, I always get kind of a funny look. Uh, and people inevitably say, well, what's legal about cancer? And my answer is usually everything. <laughs> everything about cancer is actually rooted in the law and is a legal issue. It's just things that we don't think of as legal issues. So whether or not the Food and Drug Administration approves a particular treatment, that's actually a legal issue. Whether or not your insurance company has to pay for that treatment is a legal issue whether or not you can take time off work to get access to that treatment is a legal issue. And so we don't really think of these things as legal issues. 
And they're really um, legal issues that apply to all of us in some way, shape, or form. We just don't think about them as legal issues. So I would say the ones that have consistently come up most often, and it really hasn't changed over the last two decades, are issues around navigating insurance. So how do I get insurance? How do I use my insurance effectively? Uh, and then work issues. So do I uh, work through treatment? Do I take time off? Do I go out on disability? Do I retire? Making those decisions and understanding how the law protects you can be very valuable. And then finances. So generally navigating medical bills, your financial situation, estate planning issues, um, all of those things are sort of wrapped under the umbrella of finances. Yeah, that's really great because many patients, you know, during treatment, they're afraid they can't work and they don't know what is available to them or what their legal rights are to have this resource for them to turn to. So you can explain it to them where they can understand it. That's not what their oncologists are for, and they're not going to help them. So they're kind of left with the diagnosis and now what to do. And even with the insurance, they know they have insurance, but now they have a diagnosis and actually have to use it. Um, I know a common theme that came up that comes up a lot with patients is denials. They get denials for needed screenings or scans. And is that something that you come across a lot? And how do you approach that and help somebody? I think denials are one of the most important things to understand when effectively using your health insurance. And actually, it's a bit of a soapbox issue for me because uh, the law provides some really excellent protections, especially if you have private insurance, like that you buy individually or that you get through an employer, where you have really protected rights to appeal outside of the insurance company if the insurance company is still denying you. And so, unfortunately, even though those rights exist, 99.9% .9 of people do not appeal the first denial from an insurance company. That's so they don't thinking, know. They don't know. And they don't yeah. know it exists. And so it's a really good example of how the advocacy community worked really hard to create a protection under the law. But that's only step one. If we don't make sure people know those protections exist and how to actually use those protections, the law is kind of useless. And so that's why we spend so much time focused on education of the legal issues and the laws that provide protection so people can actually tap into those protections. That is so wonderful and, and so well needed. And another one is that gets brought up a lot is you know the diagnosis and then disability. That question comes up a lot. Am I eligible? What are my rights? How do I do it? Who can help me? Where do I start? Um, so I see that disability insurance is one that you you talk about as well and help um, somebody diagnosed with, or a lot of times it's the caregiver coming and reaching out. Would, would, is that true? Because you know the, the person's too sick or it's too overwhelming. So the caregiver steps in. Absolutely. And you know, caregivers are broad. So it could be family, friends, coworkers, healthcare professionals. We even have staff of other cancer organizations who contact us on people. Uh, on behalf of people who they're trying to help out. Disability is one of those things that like everybody kind of is familiar with the concept of disability. Uh, and I think that sometimes the healthcare teams make it sound a lot easier than it is. Yeah. Like, oh, you, you don't need to work through treatment, just go out on disability. Right. But not everybody has access to disability insurance. It really depends on where you live and the type of job that you have uh, and whether or not you proactively bought a disability insurance policy. And so we spent a lot of time explaining to people the different types of options for disability insurance and then how you actually use those benefits, whether you're applying and then if you get denied, how do you appeal those denials? Yeah, that's really really wonderful because it, it's such a, I, I know they, they're like, here, just call this number. And then they're like, okay, now what? And so that's wonderful that you would help them with that. And just a few more um, that get brought up a lot are uh, veterans. And I noticed caregiver rights, the caregivers aren't aware that they have rights as well. And we get a lot of caregivers here at Jasper. Um, I think 20% of our members are caregivers. So just knowing that they have, um, you know, the legalities about it. 
We definitely have a lot of resources for caregivers, both to manage their situation, but also to support them as caregivers. Uh, and so understanding your employment rights and that can often depend on where you live uh, in terms of the additional benefits that you have access to, like paid leave. So can you actually take time off work and get paid for it, which is not something that exists at the federal level right now. And so that's a benefit that's really going to be based on where you live. And then there are lots of issues that are specific to veterans and even some uh, really specific benefits. Like we just had passage of the PACT Act, which improves access to health and disability benefits through um, the Veterans Health Administration and the VA uh, if you served in certain areas uh, during certain time periods and um, makes many types of cancers a presumptive disability, which basically all that to say is it el eliminates a lot of the barriers to showing that you qualify for those benefits, making it easier for people to access them. And so we wanna make sure that veterans are aware of these new benefits and can tap into them too. That's wonderful. And looking at all these different things listed here, you know, those are all wonderful topics and much needed to have um, help navigating through them. And, you know, a lot of triage cancer is um, the resources that you guys provide. Uh, there's so many resources, but it can be overwhelming trying to narrow them down and navigate which ones are appropriate. So can you explain a little bit about your different resources that you help align people with and guide them towards and, and what you find is more helpful? Yeah, so on our website at triagecancer.org, we try to organize all of the information that we have in two ways to make it a little less daunting and overwhelming. Uh, so we sort information by where you live. So we have resources by location because so often the state that you live in will depend will determine uh, what you have access to. But then we also sort information by topic. So if you were looking for all of our resources on health insurance, you could just go to the health insurance topics page and see them sorted. And those resources could be our quick guides, which are uh, brief snapshots of issues, uh, to animated videos, to even more in-depth information on our cancerfinances.org module, which actually guides people to information that is specific to them based on how they answer questions. So it's an interactive tool to help sort of eliminate uh, you having to look at the information that doesn't apply to you. Uh, so you're getting that tailored perspective. But these are just some of the legal topics and health-related topics that uh, we have resources on. Um, and as you can see, there's an entire uh, topics page for caregivers specifically. That's very important because a lot of times people, you know, kind of forget about the caregivers and it's really important to focus on them. So that's great that you have a section specifically for them and all these topics are, are much needed. Uh, the clinical trials that can be daunting as well, um, working with cancer. So these are these are wonderful. Um, and thank you for explaining them. I would like to go into next a really big topic that we hear a lot in, you know, the health field that not many with diagnosed have heard this term before, but it's financial toxicity. And it's something you really want to avoid uh, for your patients as a patient. Um, so how, what would you kind of discuss as what contributes to financial toxicity and what can we do to avoid it? And how do you help somebody who's currently in the midst of financial toxicity? So financial toxicity is sort of this technical term that was actually coined by researchers from Duke in 2013. But I often say, having worked in the cancer community for a long period of time, that it's not really a new issue. It's a new term, mm -hmm. um, but it's not a new problem. The cost of cancer care has always been expensive. And part of the reason that we haven't solved it over that time period is that there are so many contributing factors to financial toxicity that are really individual to a patient. So the biggest contributor that we think uh, could be addressed is by making sure that people have adequate health insurance. So not just health insurance, but health insurance that's actually not going to leave you with huge out-of-pocket costs and that actually covers the care that you need. And so we think that's sort of the number one contributor. 
but certainly not understanding that you have lots of different options for insurance or how to use insurance, like appealing those denials of care, contribute to financial toxicity. Because if you get denied and you don't appeal, one of two things is going to happen. You're either not going to get the care that was prescribed by your healthcare team, or you're going to pay for it out of pocket. And that only contributes to that financial burden. And then understanding how a cancer diagnosis could impact your career. So can you take time off work? Do you have access to a way to replace those lost wages, like disability insurance or for caregivers, paid leave? And then understanding if there are other things going on in your life outside of cancer that are going to have an impact on your financial situation. So the normal things that happen in life, like graduating from school or moving to another state, those are going to be things that will impact your finances. And so part of the challenge is that everybody's situation is going to look different. Um, and so we can't sort of globally solve it for everyone because we have to address all of these issues for each individual. And that's really true. And what I noticed, what is wonderful about triage cancer is that, you know, every, like you said, every no two cancers are the same, no two situations are the same. So how does someone come to you and get that one-on-one -on -one help for their, their issue, their questions for you to support their individual needs? Is that something, isn't that something that triage cancer provides? We do provide one-on-one -on -one assistance. Most people walk in our door through our educational events that we're either hosting ourselves out in the cancer community um, and those include our webinars and our conferences, but we also uh, partner in more than 100 events a year with other organizations like this one, um, where we're sharing information about our programs and services. So our events are a really useful way for people to learn about some of these topics um, and then hopefully come to us to learn more and get assistance with their personal situation. That, that's really wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's definitely the webinars, the free webinars are great, especially for people from all over. They can watch them and gain knowledge information that can they can get help with. Um, so this is just going more over your educational events, if you want to speak a little more to it and who, you know, who they help and what they address. Sure. So our events are all open to everyone. Uh, except we do have some training specifically for healthcare professionals so that they can learn more about the issues that patients might be experiencing. So they're better at navigating patients through those issues. Uh, but our triage cancer conferences are full day events that cover many of the topics we've discussed around navigating insurance and work and finances, um, and also making sure you have the right documents in place to plan ahead. Uh, and our next conference will be on May 20th. It is online, so anyone can participate from anywhere. Uh, and then we also have monthly webinars where you can participate live and get information about a whole variety of topics, but we also record all of our webinars so that they're a resource on our website moving forward. So if you wanted to see our webinar on Medicare, for example, that we always do in the fall leading into Medicare open enrollment, that's recorded on our website. So you can watch that at any time. Oh, that's wonderful to have the access to it whenever you need it. Cause you never know what issue you're going to have. So that's really great that you guys offer that and it's all online. Um, and then uh, your resources and materials, you have a lot and the quick guides and checklists, they're all online as well on your website. Yes. So we have a, a ton of information online that take lots of different formats because we know everybody processes information and learns in different ways. So everything from our five minute animated video on a topic to a more in-depth understanding of a really specific legal issue in cancer finances. We also have a series of practical guides to cancer rights. So those guides cover many of the issues we see people have to make decisions about. Uh, or, and we have a general guide, and then we have specific guides for young adults, for seniors, and for, one for caregivers as well. That's great. And I really love that you have, like you said, everybody kind of processes and learns differently because if somebody gets a bill or doesn't understand something or even appeal and they go to their center and speak to a financial counselor, it might be 
jargon and just a way that they leave there more confused than when they went in. So it seems like this kind of touches bases on everything and they can get their learning style, even watching a video. I prefer the videos. I think they're great <laughs> to see an animated video. So I think that's wonderful that you offer those different things um, for every different type of uh, personality and learning style. Yes, um, that's our goal. Yeah. And then, so I brought up earlier and you were giving us more information on your one-on-one -on -one help um, for each individual. So this just touches base on that a little bit more, your navigation program and your free one-on-one -on -one help. Yes. So the navigation program is open to anyone who wants to contact us. So we have individuals diagnosed with cancer contact us directly, but we also have caregivers or healthcare professionals call on behalf of someone. Uh, and really the easiest starting point is to actually go to triagecancer.org forward slash get help uh, and fill out a form. And on that form, it shares a little bit of information about what you need help with. And then it allows you to immediately schedule an appointment to talk to one of our trained staff. And the nice thing about that is it avoids the phone tag and those back and forth moments. So it allows you to pick the time where you best want to uh, be talking with us. and all sorts of issues come up as a result of a cancer diagnosis. So again, most often um, we're dealing with topics that have an impact on finances, but the legal issues could be about education and being able to stay in school, or it could be about housing issues. So uh, the best part about the navigation program is we understand more about what your individual situation is, and then we do the research to figure out what your best options are and how the law applies to your situation so that you can make the best decisions about moving forward. That's wonderful. That's really great. So all the information is on there on our screen right now. And to go to your website, like you said, you can fill out the form um, so people can do that. And then you have a, just a quick, the common issues, which we discussed earlier, you were saying health insurance and disability insurance, which I also brought up are the main topics. So this just yes. proves it right here in your graph. Yes. That. Also employment and then financial assistance is a huge one. People needing, you know, co-payment assistance and even to help yes. with the insurance so they can go to triage cancer to learn more about that. That's really great. Um, it's unfortunate that so many people need that assistance, but it's great that you're there to help them along the way. Yeah. So a lot of times people call asking for financial assistance, but we try to do a deeper dive to understand what's causing the need for the financial assistance, because we might be able to help address inadequate health insurance, or maybe there's an option for disability insurance that someone qualifies for, or a caregiver could tap into paid leave. So we try to look at the bigger picture mm -hmm. of what someone's going through. So we're not just answering the question that's being asked but taking a more holistic approach to try to help people um, sort of strategically deal with the issues that they're experiencing. That's the most important to see the person as a whole and really get to the root of the issue. Um, that's wonderful. And then you, you've talked about, you know, to me, and I would love for you to explain, um, I love how you guys, you're putting together the pieces. Yes. So we often talk about being diagnosed with cancer, like trying to put together a thousand piece puzzle without getting the picture of what the puzzle is supposed to be. Uh, and so we try to really give people the big picture of what they might be experiencing and how they might be able to address their issues, but also to identify all those individual pieces that make up their puzzle and every person's puzzle is different. So the puzzle pieces can include uh, the federal and state laws that apply to someone's situation and the programs that exist uh, front at the federal, state, and local level. If there are employer-specific policies and benefits they can tap into, do they have access to certain types of insurance benefits and their existing financial, uh, excuse me, financial situation are all things that uh, contribute to their puzzle. And that's why everybody's puzzle is going to look different so that they can kind of get the big picture of what it could look like. And they can pick the puzzle pieces that they want to tap into and put together their puzzle to pick the best path forward. I really like that analogy. That's kind of hits it on the head right there. <laughs> um, so you talked about the whole picture and this kind of goes into more detail, the different things that you just um, explained. And I really want to thank you. That was so much information I know in a short period of time, but you were very thorough. And uh, I would like to do really quick one more poll. 
for anybody logged in. So you'll see it pop up on the screen. Just take a minute to answer it. We'll give them a few seconds. Okay, so everyone does feel that they are better prepared now to overcome financial toxicity. So um, I really want to thank you, Joanna, for all that information. Um, before we do open up the Q&A tab for questions, I just really quick want to review what we talked about today. Um, everyone now knows where the Jasper name comes from and how we can help support you during your journey. You're aware of the importance of over um, our 40 nonprofit partnerships that Jasper Health has today, the importance of them, like ours with Triage Cancer. It's very important for us to partner with other nonprofit organizations and bring awareness to them so that we can all help um, the goal, which is to help the somebody going through cancer or anybody touched with can by cancer. And you've learned in detail about Triage Cancer and how you can access their programs and, uh, and how they can help you individually if you're not in their area even, so it is national. So now let's quickly, um, Joanna, let's see what some questions came through. Maybe we can answer some questions. Um, I'll read them out to you since uh, you can't see them. Um, let me just pull some of those up. So Joanna, one came in and is uh, wants to know from you, what is the best part of being in your role at Triage Cancer? I think the best part is being able to see immediately the impact of our work. Um, and, you know, when people tell us after a seminar, when we're in person or um, the feedback that we receive online, that we were just able to make things easier for them to navigate, that we lowered anxiety, um, that people feel like they have the information they need to take the next steps, that's rewarding. And it makes um, the work that we do worthwhile to me. Yeah, it's, you're definitely helping. Um, another question, what sets triage cancer apart from other organizations? Um, I would say the fact that we really specifically focus on the legal issues um, and the practical ways you have to deal with those legal issues. Um, we have a staff of five attorneys uh, who are supporting that legal and financial navigation program and guiding the work that we do around the development of um, cancer-related legal education. Uh, and so we that's pretty unusual mm -hmm. uh, in yeah. terms of other organizations in the cancer community. And that's also why um, we get to work with so many other cancer organizations because many of those organizations partner with us to provide the education on these topics. Yeah, that's definitely true. Um, you don't hear about the organizations with five legal uh, attorneys and it's much needed. Um, and as you mentioned, I just want to restate it, that these sessions are pre they're recorded. So it'll be on um, our website and uh, we can share it with you as well. Um, and then Joanna, as we end the webinar, is there anything that you would like to leave everybody um, with thinking about one last thing? Um, I think I would say that it's really important to understand all of your options, uh, just uh, knowing the option that might be most common or most um, popular in terms of what someone might refer you to as a resource um, doesn't give you all your options. So there might be a better option out there for you, but if you don't know about all the options, you can't make the best choice for yourself. So I would say make sure you understand all your options before you make those decisions. That's very true. And I, I wanna thank you so much, Joanna, for being here with us and, and for telling us about triage cancer. And um, before we end the webinar, I just want to remind everyone that our next webinar at Jasper will be Tuesday, January 31st at 1 p.m. And it'll be understanding health insurance, where we dive into the different elements of health insurance, covering key terms, supplemental coverage, as well as financial resources available to those experiencing hardships. So we look forward to seeing you there. And we thank you for joining us today. And we definitely uh, want to thank you, Joanna, for joining us and, and talking with us about triage cancer. Thank you. Very happy to be here today. Okay. And we hope everyone has a great day. Bye.